gentlemen, Montana Courtside Show 2, Season 5. Been a busy week. Uh, just got through with the baby shower. I yeah, know. No judgments here. Uh, it's not mine. Wedding, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But a wedding shower for the big fella uh, earlier in the day. Uh, Randy now two weeks out. The bachelor party now completed. That's why we look a little fatigued. Uh, long day at Cedar Point, but uh, a great day. Uh, getting ready for uh, Randy to become a married man. A lot of volleyball, though. Before we get married and uh, change uh, change the show and everything else, but let's get this going. <clears throat> All right. Uh, last week, I liked we kind of talked about um, busy week of all. Uh, Monday we had HSC and Carmel uh, to kick off the Monday evening, and uh, HSC beat Carmel in five. Uh, tell you what, you know, talking to Jason and the, uh, the HSE HSE faithful, Carmel really had a good showing. This wasn't a matter of HSE not playing up to potential. This was more so Carmel being a little better than advertised. Yeah. And that's good. I mean, that, that makes for a good year when, when guys uh, sneak up on us and, and show that they're better than what we anticipated. It and it's always good for high school volleyball when Carmel's back in the hunt. So that uh, sounds like a great match. Awesome. Uh, then we went to Yorktown and uh, Westville played that same night. Yorktown swept Westville and uh, was there. And Westfield's got some good pieces. It's going to take a little bit of time figuring stuff out. Great passing core. Didn't really pass well that night. Mm -hmm. um, no knuckles. And Yorktown cruised. You know, you said that Westfield's trying to get pieces put in the right places. You don't want that to occur against Yorktown. No. Uh, Yorktown, Yorktown will make you pay for every mistake you make. And so that's a, that's a huge, you know, that, that doesn't come as a surprise. If Yorktown's no. going to sweep it off a lot of people. Uh, we did talk about Zionsville and McCutcheon. Um, I don't know yeah. if it's McCutcheon just trying to get their, their feet underneath them, but they, they got swept by Zionsville, and, and uh, we heard some other coaches that they're a little up and down, but it's young. It's the start of the season. We've got two great players, I know of. And, yeah, well, McCutcheon's you know, trying to – it's really weird uh, when you start to try to get over that hump, and I want, Zionsville did it a little bit last year. You know where you're trying to become an established major, established player in the game, and McCutcheon's starting to get the pieces back in play. But it's the consistency and doing things, you know, over and over, day in, day out, week after week. And I think that right now you're still waiting for McCutcheon to kind of figure out who they are. Zionsville has a winning uh, reputation now. You know, they have a, a lot of uh, a little uh, swagger to them, and so it doesn't surprise me. Two really pretty good teams and. You know, McCutcheon is a program that historically has been great you know, way back in the Lonnie Worthington era. Uh, Lonnie Worthington, by the way, would make my honorable mention <laughs> of Mount Rushmore coaches. Uh, in Zionsville, uh, like I said, coming off of a year where they were arguably the best team in the state for, for most of the season. So, two good teams. That's a good start. Uh, Tuesday night we had Wapahani and Delta, and Wapahani swept Delta. Yeah, both these teams are rebuilding. Uh, Delta without Molly Hunt is uh, more than rebuilding. Uh, Wapahani still uh, enough firepower to get home. Really good ball control team. Totally different team than Jared Richardson's had the last couple of years in the sense that this team is built on its ability to keep the ball in play and let you air out. Uh, and Wapahani with the sweep of Delta surprises me a little. Yeah. Uh, I thought they would win that match, but a sweep may be a little strong, but a good start for the Raiders. Yep. Uh, Center Grove went out to Avon, and Avon took care of business there. Once again, it's it's uh, Avon's uh, legacy. You know, Scott McQueen left a legacy there, and Avon's still Avon. That jersey still carries points. Yeah. You know, they, all they've done is, uh, you could say, dominate one of the three to four most dominant programs in the state of Indiana over the last six to seven years. And so that still carries a little weight. Whenever you uh, play Avon, you're still playing against a little bit. There's some ghosts running around there. The Beth Princes and Derek <laughs> yeah. Goins and GL Johnsons are still bouncing around that building. You know, those guys are all gone, and thank God for the rest of Indiana. But, uh, you know, they're, they're still tough out. And Cedar Grove, like we talked about last week, is still young. Yeah. They've got to find themselves on the on the pins. Uh, MJ Hamill, great leader, great setter, uh, solid ball control. But they've got to find a consistent terminator correct, for them to be good. And, and I'm sure that had something to do with the Avon sweep. And then uh, the big matchup that night uh, was DeWinger heading to Belmont. Belmont pulls it off in five. Yeah, Belmont's, uh, yep. you know, uh, 
West Line did their camp this summer and came with nothing but good things to yep. say. Uh, deemed them very athletic and you know Craig Coral is, is a guy who's won championships. He's uh, he's been in the state hunt year in and year out. And so I, I think that you know if I've set her, I give him a little bit of an edge over an upstart Dwinger. But you know Dwinger is a team we talked about coming into this is a great team. Yep. You know, they gave Newcastle all they wanted. So you know great opening match and for what's going to be a really neat battle up in that Fort Wayne area. I yes, think no you're going to see a lot of these this year. Yeah. Um, then we talked about Wednesday night. Uh, HSC was our pick of the week with um, Newcastle, and HSC won in four. Yeah, I thought HSC would win this. Not everybody on the show thought that, but <laughs> I thought HSC would win the game. Got a little backlash from both sides. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whenever you make a pick, it's not personal. It's just it is what it is. But uh, HSE, a very solid, very steady team. Uh, Newcastle's still missing starters. Yeah. You know, in high school volleyball, if you take your primary ball handler out of anybody's lineup, it's going to cause troubles. You take the primary ball handler and the M1 or the top middle out of anybody's lineup, and you've got a recipe for disaster. Sure. So this Newcastle team is, is going to grow as the season gets on and those kids get back in the lineup. Uh, but take nothing away from HSE. They're very, very good. Yeah. They're very, very good and uh, capable of beating anybody on a given night. And I think this team, as I've talked to Jason before, I think HSE is a year away. That doesn't mean they can't make ground this year. Yeah. Uh, but that's a great win for HSE. Yeah. And then we talked about uh, Floyd Central battle in New Albany, and uh, Floyd Central took care of business there. Yeah. Bart Pallets is weird to say. He's Bart, out of right? Yeah, Bart Pallets. Off the good start. Bart finds a way to win. Uh, every year, uh, it's kind of like Lou Holtz. He'll sing, <laughs> he'll sing the blues, and you know they've lost this, they've lost that, and somebody's gone, and you know. But uh, he always he, seen, he always wins. Yeah. You know, he always finds a way to win. He's he may be one of the most underrated coaches in Indiana history from the standpoint he's been here for a million years, and all he's done is beautiful work. And then New Albany starting a new campaign without John Breeding. But that rivalry will always be a rivalry because of those two individuals and uh, Floyd Central off to a great start. No doubt. Um, Saturday night, uh, we talked about, well, Saturday afternoon, um, Avon went to uh, Yorktown, and Yorktown won 25-20 in all three sets. Yeah, and that's about the difference you yep. would expect with Yorktown versus Avon. You're Avon, huge advantage of the net, uh, you know, big, solid kids. But the plus or minus error ratio is going to be about five. Yeah. It's going to be about five. You know, the average team is going to make eight to ten mistakes. Uh, the average Yorktown team is going to make three to five at the most percent. You know, you got about a, yeah, you got about a plus or minus five difference in uh, in errors, unforced errors, and that's your difference in your game. That's that's saying Avon played well, probably played as consistent or as good as what a normal high school match would. You need to win, but Yorktown's going to put pressure on you to do special things because they are not going to give you anything where you need it. And then uh, we talked a little bit about Delta heading to uh, Newcastle. Newcastle took care of business. Yeah, right? Delta, as I said, is a little bit yeah. down and trying to find their way, and Newcastle is down just because he got a couple of kids yep. out, so that match is not really resembling of what it would be uh, yeah. come sectional time. And so that match is is officially over, it's done, it means nothing. Uh, sectional means everything, and so both teams need to get better, but right now Newcastle is a little better. Yeah. Time. And then I told you there's a little bit of a change on the Carmel invite this year. Um, those four teams were there, Crown Point, Carmel, uh, Providence, and Valpo. And Valpo and Crown Point went 0-2, they played Carmel and Providence, and those two went 2-0. Well, we talked, I mean, Carmel's, <laughs> Carmel surprised us a little bit. Yeah. I, I said early in the show you know, last week and then late in the season I kept referencing the fact that I was really uh, intrigued, surprised, uh, excited yep. at how the Carmel folks had uh, righted this at their vessel and really started to make moves in the right direction. Obviously they're going in the right direction, they're beating uh, Crown Point Valpo, right? whether they're up or down, or whether they're young or old. Beating those two programs means a lot, they're two great, great programs and great coaches. Carmel obviously off to a great start. Providence is Providence. It doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah. You know that that group is is always going to be in the hunt, uh, regardless. And so, 
you know, what a great invite early in the season. Yep. Uh, Lazy Boy Games of the Week, we'll kind of go through a couple of, a couple of them are pretty busy, so we're going to talk about Blues Day, Tuesday coming up. Uh, I'll give you a yeah. rundown of teams and we'll talk about okay. the one we want to talk about. But uh, Columbus East will head to Seymour, Seymour's off to a 3 0 start. Uh, Delta will head to Yorktown, Yorktown once again rolling. And then uh, the one matchup that's kind of I like that's uh, I didn't expect is Chatards came off to a good start. They really started off well, they're 2 0, and then Fishers. It'll be the first kind of little bit of a test for Fishers. You know, they haven't really played it by this past week at Lawrence Central and expected those guys to Well, Chatard's ball handling has improved immensely, and that's going to help them stay in the match with anybody. The Fishers will be a great test. Yeah. And then you got uh, Fort Wayne Leo. It's off to a 6 0 start. And then uh, Dwanger's uh, 4 1. So Leo lost an awful lot. Lost a lot. Lost their quarterback. Did it, you know, they mm-hmm. uh, rebound and they're 6 0 awesome. off to a good start. And then um, Brownsburg is. Filling their way, and they got a uh, playing field this week, which is five and one. And then the uh, Heritage, we talked about Maggie Castman, they're off to a six and one start. Um, they won their preseason little tournament on the opening Saturday, and then they're playing Carroll, which is five and well, one. So, you know, in Carroll, Carroll's awfully good. That's what, uh, you know, this weekend coming down in, the, in this part of the state and doing some damage, and it goes back to my comment. The whole Fort Wayne area is going to be a constant yep. battle, yep. and those two are exemplify that statement. Yep. And the game of the week we're going to pick is uh, Center Grove three and one head to uh, Cathedral this week. Deb McClurg rides in against Gene Kesterson. Yeah. Uh, once again, once again, it's too, <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. Those were <laughs> great days and two great coaches. Uh, Center Grove and Cathedral, two uh, two very very proud programs. I mean, when you look at the annals of uh, of history in the state, those two programs have to come up. Yep. You know, and and they, there were days when that that uh, battle was about, we wouldn't have had to talk about any other match going on on Tuesday. No. That's the only match in town. And it's still a very important uh, match, and it's young coaches, uh, two relatively new coaches, and trying to make their way. Uh, two programs that are desperately trying to find uh, their terminal athletes. Uh, the biggest difference is Center Grove knows what it's what it where it's at setting wise. Cathedral still kind of piecing that part of the puzzle together. Uh, I like both teams backwards. Uh, I like uh, the uh, they, I like the matchup at the net is pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, in my mind, I I like Center Grove because of MJ Hamill and that. I think they, as you put it, the quarterback is the difference maker in this and. She has the biggest outcome, the biggest input on the outcome of this match uh, out of all the athletes yeah. on the four. She'll be the one that can make the biggest changes. So I, I go center growth. I was going to go the same, and, uh, just because, I, like I said, I agree with you on this um, MJ thing. What surprised me of center growth was how aggressive they were defensively in that Newcastle game. we got to watch. So yeah. MJ would give the nod to a cathedral team you know, over the past five or six years because of their defense. But, you know, I like the scrappiness of the Center Grove team and see where they I go agree. with them. I agree. Then on Thursday, we got a few good matches. Uh, we've got Lepore heading in. They're 6-0. and They're going to play Crown Point. I know Crown Point's trying to figure out life after. Mm-hmm. Chacon. Um, Chacon. So, I know they got the younger one for the sister. But uh, Lepore's off to a good start. And then uh, a couple of their games for Buffs, 5-0. and And then uh, you talked to Brian a little bit. And they're playing Heritage Christian, which... They have, they, you know, they're up and coming. They got a great. Oh, is she a freshman? Colvin. Yeah. She's she's going to be really she's really, really good. Deal. She's an athletic matchup issue yep. for uh, for Brian and for Buff, but that for Buff team is is awfully good. He's got them rolling. So yeah. That'll be a good match. Yep. And then Thursday, our pick of the week is uh, Carmel head to uh, or Yorktown head to Carmel. I don't. Uh, I tell you, man. <laughs> We're going to get in our top ten in a little bit. And I, I've got one and then nine that can just battle each other off for the rest for a while just to figure out where they fit. <laughs> I, I will tell you, and I know it's like it's kind of putting a monkey on their back, but as long as that Yorktown team stays hungry, they're going to be uh, darn near impossible to beat. As long as they stay hungry. They don't read press clippings. They don't listen to my minutia. They don't listen to all the little things I'm throwing out. And they just keep playing hard for themselves. Uh, Steph Bloom is a, is a master motivator and, and a, a real taskmaster. She's going to keep them on task. But yep. Carmel, regardless of how well they're playing at this stage of the game, uh, you know, Sophie Oliphant, I've heard, is playing off the charts well. And 
they got two or three kids that are really doing wonderful things, great team chemistry. But then again, it comes down to the pressure that Yorktown puts on you. And, and sometimes we don't understand that. They, they yeah. don't give you that. As a coach, sometimes you sit on the sidelines and you, I don't know if you pray, but you silently talk to yourself about, uh, we could use a break right now, <laughs> or dear God, let them miss this serve. Uh, Yorktown won't give you those. Yeah. They won't hit the ball in the net when you need them to. They won't serve it out of bounds when you need them to. You won't get the, you know, the grace of God ace out of nowhere when you need it. Yorktown doesn't give those. So whatever you get against Yorktown is earned. And I, right now, I don't see anybody, and Carmel included, that can get 25 points, or earn 25 points a set three times against them. I, I just don't see that. And so I go Yorktown. Get out of the Browns. All right. All right. Yeah, like I said, you, you've said it a thousand times, yeah. Yorktown's just uh, – Dangerous. In a year where there's so many good teams, I'm yes. looking at Carroll, one you know, loss, Heritage. Carmel's good. Ford. But it's Carmel is good. Yeah, that's what sucks. Carmel is good, <laughs> and I think that's you're seeing that right now. There's a lot of really good, but right now there's only one trending towards great. They're getting all the votes. That's it. The preseason. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, that's it. But that's not sliding anybody. I mean, there's no. so many. I look at this list of people you throw out, and every week it's it grows. Yes. You know, it's a great, it's a great, great, great state of volleyball. And, uh, you know, you look at it, Yorktown right now has just got a little bit of a different, they're a different animal right now. Yeah, I know. Uh, 825 on Saturday, that is the busiest day of volleyball, 137 matches. Like we talked about oh. the max preps. You got all the invites. You got the Wild Honey, Ben Davis, River City, Ben Sins, uh, Bloomington South. Uh, then you got the Hoosier North South Challenge, which is awesome. Providence, HSC, and Lawrence North all beating up on each other. And then uh, a couple good matches. You got Noblesville, which is trying to find their way and, you know, lost some kids and finding their way. They're playing the Newcastle squad at their place. Blunt, and then uh, Mercy's at the center Grove. So that's always a great match. Mercy, uh, Mercy is awfully good. Mercy, center Grove. That's a, what a beautiful weekend. Uh, yeah. You know, we, can talk, we were getting ready to talk in a little bit about our Mount Rushmore's. And we've had so many great pioneers in this state, but there's some of these guys that, that were coaching way back when I mentioned Lonnie Worthington at, uh, at McCutcheon, and there's been a million others you know, that have just been huge, huge. And there will be some that will be on my honorable mention list for not Rushmore that would, should look at this 137 matches being played on, in one day. And there was a day where women's sports really got no attention. This is spectacular. And, Kudos to the Worthingtons, Kestersons, Garretts, you know, the guys that made this happen. This is really remarkable. That's beautiful. Yep. You know, and get it, it's a cheap ticket, too, since most of them are tournaments. You can watch a lot of really good volleyball no, no. this weekend. No, no. Uh, we talked about last week we did the first five. We're going to talk about, again, Raymond James, players to know. Uh -huh. um, threw five more on there. that we, we had a ginormous list. Which is a testament to the great volleyball. Un unbelievable. You know, and this one, it's got a mix of some older guys and some younger guys, and that's what I kind of liked about it. Yeah, yeah, I like your list. And, and and once again, it's in no particular order. We just got five a We week. did have questions about that. I had some uh, text and stuff. Well, why doesn't Mike get on there? <laughs> yet? No. So the list is very long. No, so it's, it's going to be a season. It, it's in no thing. particular order. And, you know, uh, I just really want to randomly touch and, and honor some of these kids that are just some phenomenal players. Uh, the great majority of them have already committed to go play college volleyball, and they're all going to big-time programs. You'll see that this week. And no, there's no order. There's no club allegiance. There's, uh, you know, this week you have about three different clubs that are, are present uh, in this, one, are yeah. present in this yeah. roll call, and one individual is not a club player. I mean, so it doesn't have an order. It doesn't have a rhyme or reason. It's just... We're picking out five out of this list that Randy has compiled that we think deserve to be heard about. I mean, and, and hopefully spur some of you guys to go out and watch these cats. Yeah. They're good players. Yeah. Fire away. We've got to talk about Kinsey Knuckles. Uh, yeah, Kinsey Knuckles. Is, going to Nebraska. Yeah. Kinsey Knuckles, senior out of Yorktown. Uh, do everything. Uh, has to play L1 or left side, outside hitter, uh, at, at uh, Yorktown because of the fact that you know, they've got a, a, an outstanding libero there as well. But 
it's what's best for the team. And, and so many of these kids, you'll see them doing what's best for the team. Uh, Mackenzie Knuckles, make no mistake about it, will be a libero or, you know, when she gets to the college level in Nebraska, which is one of the top teams in the country, if not the top team in the country every year. But, you know, she, you, know, you look at her stats, you know, almost 600 kills last year, and it's all done. I shouldn't say all done. There are moments where she shows some signs of physicality that are crazy, but a lot of it's cerebral. But her ball handling skills and defensive skills are not to be questioned, and Kenzie Knuckles is definitely one of the players to know in the state. I mean, you're talking about 500, 500 club, 570 kills last year, 516 digs. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, next kid, uh, Jessica Nungo. Nungi, I would go with. Nungi. <laughs> we, uh, and we got to make sure we get this. We couldn't find anybody to give us the pronunciation. Uh, but I mean, we talked I, to some college coaches and talked about they it. Love she it. was one of the people at the top of the list. No, and and then I we talked a little bit. Uh, a good friend of mine is the assistant coach at Florida State, and she came up several times. The senior uh, Jessica is a senior out of Castle High School, and almost once again six hundred kills, almost four hundred digs. And, you know, Florida State has is, is put together an insane program. And Jeff Holzmeyer there is their primary recruiter. And he thinks awfully highly of this young lady. And uh, he's been a good mentor and a good guide to me. I'm going to go with him on it. And so, Jessica, good luck on your season. Yeah. Uh, and another crazy thing to think about that, we just talked about how great Kinsey is at the net. Uh, yeah. Scoring-wise, she had 13 more kills last season. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Kinsey Daff. Talk about her going to Indiana. The IU, uh, Steve Aird marching into uh, the Hoosier State <laughs> and, stirring, and stirring stuff up. I don't know if anybody, if you get a chance, you got to look at Steve Aird's uh, speech he gave, and it may have been at the freshman orientation this year. It, was, uh, it, was, it looked like it was in assembly. It was off the charts. This cat is the P.T. Barnum. Uh, he's an innovator. He's an orator. He, this guy is, is going to war with uh, with volleyball in this area. And one of his first commits was Kenzie Daphne, a sophomore out of Westfield. You know, an All-American at AAU's uh, uh, rifle of an arm. She's yeah. got an, an arm that is for days. Uh, you know, she's another one of those guys. Is she going to be an outside hitter in the Big Ten? Or is she going to be a defender? Who knows? But Kenzie Daphne is a kid to definitely watch. And you're going to get a chance to watch her for the next couple yeah. of years. Had a couple hundred kills last year. Uh, 59 aces, which she's got a great little top spin jump serve. She bombs it. And the, the crazy thing is, you look at that and you're going, well, those stats don't stick out. Last year, she played in the middle <laughs> for that team. Uh, and this yeah. year, she's moved out to the left, and yeah. she's really... Uh, and she's she's growing as a person and player. She's, she's going to be really good. She's flying and ripping it these days. Next one we had on there was uh, Mabry Schaff, another AAU All-American. Sophomore out of Newcastle. Uh, National sophomore of the year last year. Yeah, but, yeah Max Preps. You know, her and her sister both were the uh, player of the year in their age groups of Max Preps. You know, the thing jumps off the board here, Cannon for an arm, uh, big toppy. Uh, it's a huge top spin serve at 99 aces last year. She's one of those kids that they get, she gets on a roll. She can crush it. Uh, when she stays big, meaning keeps her arm up and her shoulders up, she unloads on the ball. Maybe, so, uh, maybe Chef Master hasn't committed yet. Will undoubtedly be a power five kid. Uh, but a kid to be, you know, a player to be reckoned with from the standpoint that she's a matchup nightmare on the outside of the court. And, you know, Mabry's only a sophomore, much like uh, Kinsey Daphne, it gives you an opportunity to watch them for the next couple of years. Yeah. And, and just a, it's a two headed monster, like we talked about. We already talked a little bit yep. about Mel, but that's, uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. Castle. Last one on there was Holly Eastridge, who we talked about going to South Carolina. And we talked about her once a show. Yeah, we do. Uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, and her numbers, you know, are going to be double. Because of you know the infection. Well, she's she's the go-to. You know, she's going to be the go-to player at Avon. You know, she had roughly 300 kills last year and 52 blocks, and she's she is potentially the uh, biggest wall in Indiana from the standpoint of right side. But she's a big block. If you watched her in the state championships against Crown Point, she uh, she changed shot after shot. She's just a big shot altering kid, but she's very she's very mobile. Uh, when she gets in a rhythm, maybe the most dangerous hitter in the state. Yep. She can go down line. She can take the high cross, the sharp inside seam. Uh, the South Carolina commit. She's going to be big in the SEC. That's a great, great recruit for them. Uh, but before she heads there, she's got a chance to try to take Avon back to a state tournament, yep. the state championship. And Holly Eastrich is uh, 
is definitely one of the players to watch this year. Yeah, and then we get into talking about the Mount Rushmore of volleyball, um, and I know you'll go much more in depth. You know, the first thing I thought of when I wanted to do this, to my first pick, I wanted to just think of the first person that really stood out to me, and it was because I was in high school when you were coaching, um, and it was Steve Shondell. And the reason why I went that route is because the stories you hear and his record is ungodly. But the, the main thing I really enjoy over the years is um, just his will to teach and um, share with everything. You know, it's, you know, we're, I talked to him this summer here. We we're talking about camps and he's going out to Utah to go to camp with one of his former players and everything else. But uh, what I his biggest praise for me, I think, was me growing up watching you and uh, how much respect you had for him. Just because he's oh. top notch. Oh. Yeah, Win- winning and losing is not the main thing. It's just how good of a person. Well, he doing. was. Uh, he's. Uh, he was the same in victory as he was in defeat. Uh, you know, he's. Uh, I remember he congratulated you after that. Yeah, he's he's that phenomenal. Time. He's he's a phenomenal human being. Something tells me he's probably going to make my. Yeah, I, have, I, 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 I was in I was in a real debate stage here because I didn't want to play my hand. A smart guy would have probably just said, "Yeah, Steve, Steve's my team," but I'm not going that way right this week. We get four weeks yeah. of this. Remember, there's four heads on that soccer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go. One of the things we do a horrible job of we we constant re, constantly think rewarding the one billion championships uh, with. Uh, we, we, we correlate that to success and correlate that to what they brought to the game. But this state, there's so many great pioneers, you know, people that made this game what it is today. You know, these, these young ladies, I wish they really, really knew uh, some of the guys in the old days. And I say old days, that's me, uh, that made this game what it is for them. They, they rolled out the carpet. And so my first Mount Rushmore is a little bit of a surprise for you, is Gail Greitman. At Lafayette, Jeff, I, I think that uh, what she's done for the game, uh, well, the game, the game. Understand that it wasn't just the the girls' game, but yeah. it was the girls' game, the boys' game, the game. A uh, great pioneer, great leader, and we so often we forget the great leaders. And I, I thought she did as much to advance the game of volleyball in this state as as anybody that's ever yeah. blew a whistle or held a clipboard. So my uh, my initial Mount Rushmore is Gail Greit, Steve Shondell. That's a great first pick. You know, I'm anxious to see your next the next three. Yeah. But uh, that's the first installment of Mount Rushmore. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, and I'll be interested to hear some of the feedback from those folks and give us instant feedback <laughs> on uh, on whether they like or dislike our picks. Uh, my pick's not up for debate. I can tell you that. Uh, Quality, quality people, and neither is Randy's in this case. You can't argue either one of those. We'll see. We'll see if Randy copies me at this point. I didn't want to give him any answers. <laughs> you know, he's got to get used to this. He's getting married. He's, the freebies are, are now over with. He's going to pay for everything for the rest of his life. Here right. we go. Uh, GearMontana.com, talking about the rankings. Um, I think they received all 61 first place votes this week. Sources, but um, we'll get to those guys in a little bit. We'll kind of talk about um, the honorable mentions, and I mean, like I said, I threw a bunch in there. Yeah, um, we can pick and choose them all. I mean, here's my thing: is you know, we're talking about all these honorable mention teams, and they're all undefeated still, and off to a good start. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot: Laporte, Mount Vernon, Michigan City, uh, Leo. All those guys are undefeated and rolling. Uh, the guys that I kept still high: yeah. uh, LCC, Lafayette. You know and that. My LCC guys, uh, I'm telling you, people actually do watch the show because I... I gave a shout-out on Twitter as well. Well, LCC, uh, I just want you to know that um, I'm deeply, and I'm not going to tell you what school, but I do have now a... I made the comment I thought you guys were the 1A favorites. I didn't tell you about this, but I do. I did get a call out that now I have a lunch bet on this. If LCC wins, I get lunch. If LCC loses... And I have to buy it. So, you know, I, there's a little bit of pressure on you guys. I know there's a lot on you to repeat as state champions, but daddy needs to eat. So make sure you keep <laughs> that in mind. Uh, Burris, uh, you know, it's just neat seeing you reference Steve Shondell. It's really neat seeing the rebirth of that Burris team. Yeah. So 
Pretty much. Um, mentioned. Yeah. Good team. Yeah. No doubt. All right. Number ten. Carol. You know they come out at five and one. Uh, a mixed bag of people they beat. They did beat HSE down one player. And they, all season long, people can be up one player, down one player. But they did beat HSE this weekend. Uh, minus probably their best all around player. Yeah. Um, they lost to Penn, and Penn is uh, Penn's like I said, Penn's Penn. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're a great little team. But Carroll, uh, it's the best Carroll team they've had since Jackie Quaid. Yeah. And so I, I like Carroll at 10. Yep. Uh, just talking about these guys, number nine. Penn. Uh, you know, Penn is going to get better. Incredibly well coached. Yeah. Uh, always athletic. Uh, great legacy. All of the things you need to be a great team, uh, they have in play. Now, they haven't really been pushed too much. Uh, they've beaten some folks back back home, and, and they did lose to HSE. Uh, but HSC on all cylinders going is a pretty darn good yep. team. And so I think Penn is a team that right now is at my nine. Don't be surprised if Penn uh, is still being heard from in uh, the first weekend of November. It would not surprise me, coaching alone. All right, number eight. Center Grove. Um, yeah. They've got to find a Terminator. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I've, said it, I've said it the last two weeks. Second, so they're setting a second to none. Ball handling surprising. Uh, the, their play at the libero position alone is uh, as feisty as I've seen other than Kylie Murr. Uh, Tremendous. Only losses to a, a good Avon team. Correct. This week will go a little further in helping them establish who they are, but they've got to find they got to find guys that are going to be terminal at the net. Yeah, that's their they're figuring out the front set. Yep. Yeah. All right, number seven, Dwinger. Dwinger, you know, and the, you know they took down Concordia. They took down half of Fort Wayne this week. <laughs> it's South and Snyder. Yeah, they played everyone there. Yeah, the only losses to Belmont. Uh, you know, Belmont's a team that we probably need to add into our honorable mention. Yeah. You know, and, and he didn't put him on there. We're going to put him on there. Belmont, honorable mention. Congratulations. <laughs> a, Dwinger is uh, is is a, a formidable op opponent in the sense that I think that last year when they were with Newcastle, they were probably a year or so away from getting where they got to go. I think they're closing in. Yeah. I think they're dangerous. and. You know, Belmont beat them at five tells me a lot about Belmont, but I think this Dwinger team is going to only get better as the season goes on. Yeah. All right, number six. HSE. You know, and, and you look, they beat Carmel, they beat Newcastle, they beat Penn, they beat Knoll, lost to Carroll, minus one. But, you, you you know, they lose to Carroll, minus one. They beat Newcastle, who was minus two. This time of year, who knows? Yeah. I, I just know the nucleus of that team, the coaching, uh, the legacy, you know, it's a relatively new legacy. We were talking about uh, Center Grove and uh, Cathedral. That's a lifetime legacy. HSE, over about the last six to eight years, really, really started to put things together. And every year they're in the hunt. And two of those seasons, you know, they were a play away from being in the state championship. This team, I believe, is a year away from uh, making some severe noise maybe a year and a half. And, you know, that can age. People can change quickly. But right now they're my number six, and they're a darn good team. Uh, the Mills kid in the back row is a dominator. Uh, Shelton in the front row is, uh, it went healthy. You know, she's got to get her back to health. Is as good as anybody around. Phillips is a very, a very competent leader. Uh, I like this HSE All right, number five. Uh, Duff, Hayworth, and the gang, I, I like this group. Uh, Fishers is still, they beat Lawrence Central and McCutcheon. They haven't played as much as, say, uh, an HFC. Uh, this is where people are going to argue the most with me about the, the rankings. You know, some of you probably, I'm surprised people haven't thrown Muddy Socks. Mud Socks, I know. I remember Mud yep. Socks. Muddy Socks on my car. But uh, I, I still like uh, Fishers until they get beat. Uh, you know, it's, you know, I, I think as, as long as they're winning, they can stay ahead of some people. And can continue to push. I, I got to see where they're getting their offense from. You know, they got some young kids, a young middle, young pin. Uh, you can't argue with the setting. No. You can't argue with the setting. You can't argue with the Hayworth kid. She's a great athlete. But you know the the complete body. 
uh, we'll see soon when Fisher's and HSE meet up, and that should be intriguing going forward. But yeah. I like Fisher staying in five. No doubt. No. All right, four. My top four stay the same. Yeah. Uh, Avon's only loss this week was to uh, uh, Yorktown. They didn't play. You know, they had Lawrence North, and they didn't get really tested a whole lot this week. And a loss to Yorktown is nothing to be embarrassed about. This Avon team's got a lot of growing to do. You know, they've got a lot of positions to replace. They've got people, though. Make no mistake about it. They've got the people and the personnel to fit in and make it work. You know, whether the Asian going slipping in somewhere here or the East Ridge. These guys have, have been in, in the hunt. And these are kids that have, have played in big-time matches. And they're young kids. They're going to grow. And as they grow, this Avon team will as well. Don't sleep on them. They're my number four. Yeah. All right. Top three. Newcastle, number three. Got to get their bodies back. Got to get people back in the gym. And have got to play. Uh, with a sustained uh, sense of urgency. You know, I talked about that last week. You know, these guys, if they can get to the point where there's an elite effort made on every play, they could be the best team in the state of Indiana. But that means an elite effort. I didn't say you had to make every play. I said there has to be an elite effort on every single play. Uh, that's the big difference between uh, where they're at and where Providence and York are at. And then Yorktown's a totally different level on that. But an elite effort on every single play, when Newcastle gets all their people back, would put would thrust Newcastle into the talk of the best team in the state of Indiana. Right now, Mel Shaft, Master in the game, stay at three. Yeah. All right, number two. Providence. Uh, only loss was to Mercy, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. Second state in Kentucky, by the way. Yeah, the second the state, one of the best teams in the country. Second on our list. They also get the shadow of that. Yep, they're they're Kentucky a, State ranking and then uh, courtside ranking. Yeah, they're they're, <laughs> they're yeah, and that's all they need is more publicity because they're going to get a lot this year. But Mercy's awfully good, and you know Providence is a team that's still got some young pieces. You know they got some young kids that are filling in. You know Marissa Hornick is, is a phenomenal player, and replacing her is going to be a, a little difficult, and, and some guys are going to have to step up and do things they haven't done before, but things they are very capable of doing. And with great leadership at the setting position and, and even more so great leadership at the coaching position with Parika, Providence is going to be fine. This week, number two, last week, number two. And uh, I don't expect them to move around the whole lot this season. Definitely. And the boys? Yorktown. <laughs> Yorktown. You know, this is uh, – the show is shot in Yorktown and everybody probably thinks, but you know what, there – they're keeping me uh, from getting bombed on a regular basis because everybody says, well, can they be that good? Then they come up and play them, and then people are texting me going, man, they're that good. Yeah. Um, they are that good. Yeah. You know, and now they're at full strength with Kenzie Knuckles in the lineup. Uh, I'm excited to watch them. Again. Yeah, they, they've got kids that are going to the Big Ten that are eventually going to be Big Ten, Big Ten Liberos sitting on the bench. Yeah. Uh, this team – is absolutely loaded from a ball control standpoint, absolutely loaded from a competitive standpoint. Remember I made that, that, that statement that uh, the key is to have a team that's giving you an elite effort on every single ball. That's these guys. These guys are battling. I mean, they're beating some teams that, albeit aren't great teams, but they're beating some people to death. Yeah. I mean, they're pounding people. You know, scores like four, six, and eight in a match. And, you know, you look and you go, well, they're, the, they're just the better team. Now, keep this in mind. When you hold a team to 18 or less points in a match, you could look, one person could say, well, you know, they're just not playing great competition. The other person needs to look at it and say, my God, that is pretty clean volleyball. That means they're making so few errors that uh, they're not giving you any points. And that's, Definitely. that's really critical. That's like I said, in the Avon match, Plus five, plus or minus five errors is where they're going to be for a while this season. They're five points better than everybody in the state of Indiana right now because of their, you know, their ability to not make errors. As long as they maintain their intensity, as long as they maintain their why, as to why are we playing this hard, uh, their ball control will carry them the rest of the way. Yorktown High School, my number one ranked team in the state this week. Yep. That's all we got for you. Yeah, I tell you what, we got to start the countdown inside, <laughs> inside of two weeks. Yes, sir. To Randy's wedding. Um, Not this Saturday, any, the following. Yeah, the following Saturday. Probably a special edition coming from Alabama next time out. Uh, hey, we'll do it, 
do the yeah. show, do a show for you down in Alabama with the accents and the whole nine yards. But until <laughs> then, pray for Randy, catch a lot of high school volleyball week, and uh, continue to be great sports fans. Thank you.